Hey, y'all. This is Georgia Living. I'm Celine Evans. And I'm Chris Evans. Thanks for listening. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. We are on fall break for Cobb County School this week. So Celine and I are recording from the mountains of LJ. So if you hear some dogs moving around in the background, sorry, we're getting the audio the best that we could. Um, we're real people. But we're real people <laughs> with three kids that are not in school today. No. <laughs> and, um, and we have to work around that. Um, this so, is real life. <laughs> so for fall break this year, we're, we're now at the start of fall. Um, I think Saturday was the first day. Yeah. And with that means it's oh, time Sunday. to... Oh, Sunday. Sunday was the first day of fall. Sunday. Yeah. yeah. So uh, with that, it's a um, a great time to start enjoying some of the, the great fall things. Uh, so, Salim, what have, what have we been doing so far this week? Oh, so as far as being up in LJ, um, that is the foothills of the North Georgia mountains. And we have a little place here, just a little cabin. And we get to come up here um, when we have time. And the kids have been coming here since they were little babies. James was maybe two, three. I'm not James so sure. James was about two and a half, three when the cabin was finished. Yeah. And it's really great up here. The people are so laid back and I love it. Um, right now is the Apple Festival season. So anywhere from... Uh, I want to say early August to late October, we have amazing apple varieties, and they're all different kinds. I'm sure you're going to cover it, right? Yeah, so the the apple season, the festival hasn't started yet. No. However, it is apple season, and uh, with apple season comes uh, the red apple barn, um, Penlands, all sorts of just great places to... To take the the kids, um, you know, from apple picking that that's live now. You got to be careful with traffic on the weekends because there's lots of folks coming up here. But um, getting in there, the Rome beauties are just starting. We picked up some mm. Gala apples and some Granny Smiths uh, while we were up here. So the Granny Smith apples are the best for pie making. And I know you're an absolute fan of my pies. I am. I'm a huge fan of the pies. And <laughs> after talking about them on the last episode, I yeah. uh, definitely had to encourage you to make some more this year. So I got, okay, it goes something like peck, bushel. I am not really. Half peck, bunch. peck, like There's, bunch, there's a specific way to measure apples. And I think we got maybe the second side size up there are four sizes that i know of and um we got the second size up which means i'm going to be making four pies i can't wait yeah. i'm excited about that yeah um rome the- beauties are the ones that you use for applesauce you can just um peel them and then you can stick them in a crock pot cooker maybe you know four hours or so five hours and it becomes amazing and you can can them too and they last for a long time Yep. Now, I did have to leave LJ yesterday for a closing in Kennesaw. Uh, so when we got to the Red Apple Barn, we didn't do the you pick. So we didn't go and, and pick the apples from the trees. Uh, if you do that right now, Rome Beauties are there and they're all ready to be picked. However, we just went into the store, let the kids shop. Uh, they picked out all sorts of little goodies from little water games to uh, the escapades with the lip gloss. <laughs> um, uh, I'll, Celine, I'll let you talk about that one. <laughs> Why don't you <laughs> talk about this lip gloss that our girls picked out and wanted to buy yesterday? Well, first of all, the Apple Barn and a uh, Panorama. You said Penlands, but Penlands. it's actually Panorama. Panorama. Panorama yes. Orchards. Um, there are a few others as well, and they span from kind of the Talking Rock area all the way over to East LJ. And that kind of valley area, I want to say. Um, and these stores have fresh cider donuts, you know, the, the kind with the coarse sugar on the outside. Ooh. They have the fresh cider as well. I think you got blackberry. Yeah, I got a, um, they, they sell yeah. it in gallons, half gallons. And then they also have like single serving. Yeah. Um, and I got a blackberry apple cider yesterday. So good. So good. 
<laughs> and then they have bread. Um, we are honest people. One of our kids went by and started smashing the the iced cake, or I call it cake, but it's breakfast bread. Yeah, here. yeah. it was like a uh, bread with an icing on. A top. dessert cake, a dessert bread, and um, yeah, since she smashed it, we bought it. <laughs> Um, trinkets as well so they have little things Um, unfortunately our six-year-old found a lip gloss which you would think that it has you know Disney characters all on the outside and kind of like you know kiddish oh it's not gonna be that bad well uh, it looked like she had gotten into concentrated strawberries and the thing died it was so red the lips it was so so red like the it was, it crayola was, it red was more red than the color of this cable right here <laughs> it was it was bright red and then it it yeah. wasn't even though it was like advertised as kid stuff it, it wasn't like no. kid stuff it wasn't flavored or anything like that and it was impossible to get off so don't don't get that okay I promise it's it not was, worth it <laughs> it, it made a mess. The kids had stained faces, um, but they had such a great time with it. it it's always uh, just so much fun to get out here. We love being away from the beaten path, um, and uh, the cabin that Celine's parents built is uh, it's back around four miles of old logging roads to get to, so it's four by four is needed. It's just a great way to disconnect. Uh, beautiful sunsets and sunrises whenever we get a clear day. So uh, that that's what we've been doing for fall break. We hope that whatever uh, is going on in your neck of the woods, you've been enjoying it as much as possible as well. Uh, and with the fall being here, we do have some great fall events coming up uh, to stick on where or to continue on with um, some of the stuff we talked about last week. We still have some uh brown bag concert series we're, we're coming to the last of the free concerts for marietta square this year uh so the brown bag series concludes on thursday september 26th that's going to be aiden fisher the brown bag series happens in may and in september it brackets the uh the end of spring and the start of uh, fall, and that is where they do uh, free lunch concerts on the square from noon to one. Uh, bring your brown bag and catch the last one on September 26th from noon to one for Aiden Fisher. And then the next day, uh, catch the last of the um, summer concert series. Uh, this is the Glover Park concert series. It's the final concert, concert of the year, which will be taking place on September 27th. And that's the Bourbon Brothers. It's a Rat Pack tribute band. So for these concerts, you, sh- you should take a chair, right? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I don't know of any seating that's there that other than the benches so around the fountain. So they do have some seating, uh, and you have to reserve that well in advance. I think that um, they do it for the season. More information is available oh, right. for that on uh, Marietta's, Marietta.gov's uh, website where you can find out information about the uh, concert series. But you can get there, get there early, bring a a folding chair, bring a picnic uh, blanket, bring some cocktails, and just enjoy your evening on the square. We're supposed to have, uh, hopefully we'll have some great weather. I know we do have a storm that's brewing and possibly making its way up here. Yeah, it's coming up from Florida north, going through the panhandle, and then coming up to us. So I think that's supposed to hit friday north georgia is already preparing for that and pickens county their emergency response is already uh talking and making sure everybody's aware so uh spread the spread the word and if you're in the path of the storm please be safe these are nothing to mess with so chris you know that a lot of the places in metro atlanta have underground utilities um uh, even places that were built in the 70s but a lot of places don't a lot of places were built before that or Mm -hmm. just opted not to have underground utilities so those are the ones that are really going to be affected because i know that on the main roads as well um we had one that the past storms that we had um a tree fell onto those hanging power lines Mm -hmm. and then it took out an entire road for a, a day and a half or so oh yeah and it was a really big detour so you know it might not be a bad storm but watch out for those areas especially when you know there are very few cut throughs and detours around there yeah be careful and uh you know if you're in an area of 
um, high tree cover, things like that. Make sure you're prepped with emergency supplies. I know up here at the cabin the last time we had a storm roll through, we had like 13 down power poles. Lots of trees down. Um, one of our neighbors up here showed us a picture. It looks like there's a hurricane off in the di- or a tornado off in the distance. I'm pretty sure that was a tornado. It looked like one. Yeah, tornadoes do come here in Georgia. Yeah. I mean, it's not unheard of. But at the same time, there may be category one or two. We're not really seeing fours or five. I don't think I've ever heard of a four or five here. Have no, you? not not in my memory. No, no. Um, continuing on with some of the fall events, we have Chalktoberfest coming up in Marietta Square, which will be on October 12th and 13th. I've from, seen some billboards on that. Yeah, it's, yeah. they're starting. Uh, so on Saturday the, ten, or Saturday the 12th, it starts at 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Sunday starts at 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Admission is free and open to the public. Beer and wine tastings require paid tickets, uh, which are $45 in advance or $50 the day of. More can be found for this on Choctoberfest.com. Further, uh, we've got the Cobb County Library Fall Book Sale coming up, which will take place at the uh, Cobb Civic Center. The fall book or the book sale for the Cobb County Library happens twice annually. Uh, And this is a great way to get out and... um, Have you seen pictures of that? It's huge. It's huge. It takes up the entire floor of that Civic Center. The the proceeds from this sale are used to purchase new books and other library material. So prices range from 50 cents to $4, and the prices are subject to change. Here you can find books, magazines, videos, records, CDs, and more. So adult hardbacks are $1.50, large format paperbacks are $1, pocket paperbacks are $0.50. Cents. Um, so there's, there's some great stuff there, including records and puzzles, board and golden books, uh, children's paperbacks, hardbacks, magazines, audiobooks, DVDs are there, CDs, multi-disc sets. Uh, so they're going to have lots of stuff. Go and support your Cobb County libraries. This is going to take place at the Cobb County Civic Center, 548 South Marietta Parkway. Um, Pay attention to that. This used to be held at Jim Miller Park. Yeah. Uh, so this has been uh, moved over to the Civic Center. It's free admission, free parking. Uh, just go and support. There will. Uh, there was a spring sale that happened in March, so we could probably presume that there will be another one next spring. But for now, they do take debit cards, credit cards, cash, and check. Um, the It'll be Friday until 1 p.m. The ISBN scanners are not permitted. Uh, Book sale will only be able to sell up to two boxes of items at a time on Friday until 1 p.m. What do you mean ISBN scans? So um, I guess you have some book collectors that go in and they'll scan books and try and find ones that are a really good deal and probably resell those. Um, You know, you've got people that do that all the time. So they're not permitting that in the first day. We want to make sure that they want to make sure the community is taking part in this, not people who are profiteering. So they're not allowing scanners. So if you're a member of the public, get in there early, get your best choice of pickings before everybody who is trying to profiteer on it. Unless it's a first edition Gone with the Wind that has the pristine jacket cover, (laughs) I'm not interested. (laughs) I like my Kindle. I'm a Kindle person. Are you? I am a huge audiobook person. Really? Yeah. I, that's it, that's true. That's true. You're always listening to that. I am. I love our library. You know, we have we have library cards both for Georgia and, and Alaska uh, because we are always utilizing Libby. Uh, you know, you use... So Libby, you can actually hook up to the Cobb County library system. I don't know yeah. if a lot of people know this, but you don't physically have to go to these libraries to take part. Now, obviously, you have to go to get a library card, but in Cobb County, where we live, it's every two years, and if they don't hear from you or if you don't check out a book, then they discontinue your library card. But with that, you can hook on to Libby, which is the app that you use on your phone, and then you can check out magazines, periodicals, any of that, audiobooks, um, hard, uh, the hard to get ones are going to be on wait lists Mm -hmm. um but it's really not that bad and this is really great for homebound people especially who just can't get there physically um you know there's a lot that's offered out there 
I have saved probably $200 alone in the Asian saga over the last year because there's so many books in that and they are so long. We're talking 50 hour audio books. This is the this Shogun is Shogun. book. Right? Shogun. Yeah. It, the one that Shogun's just, the first one. The so. one that just won the Emmy for Best Act. Dress, we we did watch say? that yeah. yeah they won they won a lot of awards um but we we were watching that and um decided i'm gonna read the book because the book is always better the book and the series were actually pretty spot on uh but then i continued on so i'm about uh four out of the six books completed right now in that series and it's it's really good but it saved me a lot of money using it, Libby. Yeah. yeah, you gotta wait. Sometimes a couple of months, but public resources are good. They are. So support your libraries, y'all. Uh, Cobb County has its diaper day coming up, uh, wi- which will be uh, in. Let's see when is this? October twenty fourth. Um, well, it's they have diaper drives coming up now. So the Cobb County Diaper Day Committee is a diaper drive with the goal of collecting more than 100,000 diapers for low-income families throughout Cobb County. Uh, This was founded by a concerned group of community leaders with the goal of raising awareness. Uh, In tough economic times, securing the most basic needs and having diapers to care for infants is a challenge that low-income families face on a regular basis. Uh, So the drive is going on through the month. Uh, The ways that you can help um, you can make a donation at cobdiaperday.com. You can purchase diapers on Amazon through the uh, Cobb County Diaper Day wish list. That is on Amazon. You could search that. You can declare a day to collect diapers from fellow employees, organization members, neighbors, or friends. So you can create your own diaper drive at your work. Um, or you can drop off diapers at one of two community locations, uh, one being Johnson and Alday Law Firm on 219 Roswell Street in Marietta. Uh, They'll be collecting diapers from October 16th through the 20th, uh, and Cobb EMC Solar Flower Garden in Marietta. Uh, And they will be collecting... uh, The dates that they have published are actually from last year. So um, we will update the show notes with the drive dates that are collecting for this year. Uh, Information here can be found on cobdiaperday.com. The 2024 Diaper Day Drive locations October 22nd and 24th from 2 to 6 p.m. at the Cobb EMC Solar Flower Garden. Uh, on cobdiaperday.com, you can get more information about this event. We've got some, as the weather is going to cool down, we've got uh, a taste of Ackworth coming up uh, October 12th from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. The event benefits local schools and charities, features 150 area restaurants and businesses. Uh, free, free admission, food samples range from $1 to $10. This is going to take place in historic di- uh, the Historic District on Main Street in downtown Ackworth. For more information here, you can call 770-423-1330. What's the first restaurant you think of when you think of downtown Ackworth? Henry's. Henry's. <laughs> Henry's. It's They're a Cajun. Louisiana, Louisiana Cajun old, food. Yeah. It's good. It's been there forever. It's so good. Um, definitely that very first thing. I, I, it's like a knee jerk reaction. Yeah. Um, okay. So those are the events. Let's see. So with, uh, with us getting into fall, it is haunted house time y'all and the folks over at folklore haunted house. These things are no joke. They are, uh, they are open for the season. (laughs) Uh, FolkloreHauntedHouse.com is where you can go. They are located here in Cobb County. They're in Ackworth, and they've opened up for the season. Now, their schedule changes. Uh, As we get closer to All Hallows' Eve, uh, they will be open more frequently throughout the week. For right now, check their website for hours of operation. Uh, I know that they're going to be open weekends, like Friday, Saturday, and then it goes to like Thursday, Friday, Saturday as we get closer. 
Um, so definitely check out the folks at FolkloreHauntedHouse.com. I've heard that some of the Atlanta haunted houses are some of the scariest. They have some terrifying ones. Now, and, yeah, don't go there if you have a heart problem or anything, because I think they actually come out and, you know, like get really close to your face or... I'm not so sure. I think some of them even, you know, shove you and push you in the back. And There's one in Tennessee that will actually ask you what your fears are and then put you in your fear setting. Uh, it is terrifying to me. I am not a haunted house guy. I, I do enjoy a good scary movie, but I am not one to put myself in, no. in being terrified. You know what my fear is, right? Biscuit cans. Oh when when God. they pop, I'm yeah. not kidding. Like if they put me in a room full of biscuit cans that popped, I don't. I think I'd cry. <laughs> so I that's show, not very Halloweenish. I, I showed you the video. <laughs> there was a video going around TikTok the other day where uh, somebody was opening up a can without peeling it. It's like they were a psychopath. So they were just banging the can and then looked into it, and the top popped off and hit them in the face. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, you would. I Yeah. So. That's terrifying to me. <laughs> it yeah. can be. We've got some big news happening here in Cobb County. Um, the Atlanta Business Journal reported on this a couple of weeks back. There is a major mixed use development called South Spring. And it is in the works, y'all. Picture this. A 20-story residential tower. 650 units plus two commercial buildings covering 175,000 square feet and a 10 to 12 story office building with 200,000 square feet of workspace and 250 hotel rooms. This is going, there's also going to be a public plaza, a park, and wait for it, 1,700 parking spaces. And that's this, a lot of cars. It's a lot of cars. Y'all, this is going to happen on Spring Road in Smyrna by Truist Park and Cumberland Mall. Uh, That's the develop- awesome. The developer here is 2,800 properties, uh, and they're aiming for a 2028 finish. So you'll have to stay tuned for some updates here. But this is huge for anybody who's living in the Cumberland area, any anywhere within the, the Cumberland Community Improvement District, Smyrna. Where exactly uh, is this? So the, uh, the proposal is going to be, let me see if I can get, find the link for it. So while you're looking for that, I think the rain from that hurricane just rolled in. Can you hear it? We have a metal roof here, so it's everything is pretty amplified. It's like a drum, um, but I'm pretty sure. The kids just pulled down the curtains. Yeah, it's OK. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Here we That's go. That's life. Yeah, please don't touch it. Thank you. Let's see if this loads. Uh, Fox yes, 5 has raining. it. It would, uh, it would be right near US 41, so Cobb Parkway, and 285. So it's going to happen near the Cloverleaf. Uh, oh, okay. So that's, wait, the Cloverleaf, is that where the Weather Channel is? Well, that, it's a part of it, yes. Yeah. So this, this would happen on the inside of the Cloverleaf at 41 and 285. Mm-hmm. Um, so the. There's some mixed concerns, right? Some people are thinking that the development is going to push people out. Um, Other folks are saying, yes, bring the development. It's foot traffic, which brings more money into the area and allows for more development. Uh, So this is a $492 million set of high rises. And um, it's slated. I'm seeing if I can figure this out. So here's Cobb Parkway. Here's Spring Road. So this is really right behind where the um, the indoor skydiving place is. Oh, that. Yeah. So Spring Road. If you're Spring, if you're at Spring wow. Road and you're turning right to head towards the 285 on ramp, um, it would be immediately on your right, right past the first set of shopping. It would be right behind that. And it looks like you may be able to get access to it. The Holiday Inn Express uh, may share 
uh, an access road that comes through it off of Spring Hill Parkway. Wow. So really between uh, the, the grid would be Cobb Parkway, 285, Spring Hill Parkway, and Spring Road would be the boundaries here. Yeah. Um, and again, 400 and what would they say? $492 million development. That's going to be fantastic. Now, this is taking place in Smyrna. This is in the Cumberland Improvement District, which gives us a great segue into today's topic. We want to educate everybody about the Cumberland Improvement District to know exactly what is a CID. Well, so let's go back, back to maybe the 80s. <laughs> um, this area was not like it is today. It is completely different. It is. Um, I remember going up. Um, it is now not a pond anymore, but it used to be. There have always been office complexes in the back, um, right where Truist Park is now. And so that was kind of an industrial um, office area. And they had this really quaint park there and one um, pretty sizable lake i want to say it was i think it was manufactured to begin with it looked very manicured and so i remember going there and being accosted by this giant duck that had maybe it was a goose it had a lot of teeth and it bit me so that you know when you're three it lasts a forming a lasting impression on you but that is no longer there anymore it is completely gone filled in and the skyline of this area with the addition of TKE, which is the um, elevator, elevator company. Yes, the Thessen Krupp. Thessen, Thess, it's a very uh, hard name for it. me. It's, it's a German name. And I don't the, speak Thessen German. Krupp and TKE. Okay. Um, it's really tall because it has a test facility in it. The world's yeah. tallest test elevator. That I is believe. so cool. Um, they didn't have the indoor skydive place there. They didn't have, oh gosh. Did they have racetracks headquarters in Papa John's at that time? I don't think they did. Um, that came very racetrack late. maybe. The Weather Channel was always there. The Weather Channel's been there for uh, a very long time. Comcast is now headquartered there. There's a Comcast building right by the Brave Stadium. Yeah. You've got the Brave Stadium. You've got the battery with all the restaurants, everything from um, you know the Coca-Cola Roxy to Sitka Atlanta, which is my favorite. So, you know, my first job ever in my life was being a hostess at Papacitos. It's the only Papacitos outside of Texas. So a lot of people who come from Texas to move here are absolutely thrilled to have this one restaurant because- It was when you worked there. I'm sure there's more now. I, I don't think so. Really? I think I think it's only one. I think it's that one only. Hmm. Um, but that, that was my first job. And I remember looking outside thinking, oh, there's not much here. But now if you look outside, there's another parking lot, there's another hotel. And all this came with the whole Braves moving from um, South Atlanta or South Midtown, right? Is that where yeah. they, well, is they're, that, they're is it called at, Midtown there? No, that would have been... Uh, Near the Panther Stadium where they used to be. Downtown. Turner would, Field. Ted Turner Field. Yeah, which is right next to Bloom County right. Stadium. You're right, still only location in Georgia. Yeah. See, Puppet a lot, a lot of people more. like that when they come from Texas and move here. Absolutely love it because it's the huge enchiladas, you know, just smothered in cheese and everything. And they have this really cool tortilla maker that you can just kind of stand in front of. And in the wintertime, it's really, really nice because it's like a personal heater. Great margaritas. <laughs> great event space as well. If yeah. you need a place to host uh, 20 or 30 people, their matador room in the back is fantastic. They don't charge. At least they didn't charge for the event space, just for the food. Um, yeah. Really, really great place. So that place has really developed, and this addition now, what is its official name? You were talking about some, you had an official name for this development that you're talking about. The oh, new the, one. the new one? This is uh, South Spring. That's really cool. Yeah. I, I've watched this whole area just grow and boom. I spent a lot of time over in Smyrna in high school as well, because a lot of my friends went to Campbell, mm -hmm. um, and just... We used to skateboard at the bank, uh, in da like on the Village Green, and just now it's completely changed. 
Well, that that's a little further away yeah. from the Braves area. You have to go down Windy Hill a little bit and then take a turn. It so. is. The, the whole all of Smyrna has changed. It, it really started with the Village Green. From then, the 2000s on. Then when uh, Tim Lee, our former Cobb County Commissioner, brought the Braves in, I know there was a lot of hubbub about that, but the tax base to the county has exceeded expectations every single year since it's been incorporated creating more opportunities and more development for all of us here. And part of that is this CID. So the Cumber uh, a, a CID stands for Community Improvement District. There are many of these throughout the state of Georgia. And essentially it is a self-imposed tax on businesses within the area. And that tax goes back towards that area uh, so for example we have a town center CID we have the Cumberland CID so in the Cumberland CID all of the businesses at the battery Cumberland Mall uh, kind of in this corridor have this self-imposed tax that gets reinvested back into the community uh, information about the CID can be found at Cumberland CID Dot org, But some of the projects that they're doing are extraordinary, and I wanted to bring this to everybody's attention on this episode today. So one of the projects, uh, they just broke ground on this at the end of August, but this is New Day Palisades. Uh, New Day Palisades is a two-phase project which is going to enhance and restore 22 acres of green space along the Chattahoochee River uh, to continue community prosperity. This is a joint project between the Cumberland CID, One Cumberland, and the National Park Service. Uh, phase one of the project is to renew the Paces Mill, uh, or renew Paces Mill in the Chattahoochee River National Recreational Area. Uh, New Day Palisades is an inspired $15.8 million project that will rehabilitate Paces Mill um, a 22 area or 22 acre recreational green space along the Chattahoochee River. Paces Mill is part of the Chattahoochee River National Rec area. It includes a 48 mile section of the river from Lake Lanier to Atlanta. Uh, this was established nearly five decades ago by Jimmy Carter. And the goal of the area was to bridge the need for well-preserved recreational areas in growing urban centers. This is just one project that the CID is doing. Um, others include on-ramp access, they include green space, bike shares, trails, uh, the Cumberland Sweep Project, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, but this is the organization that is collecting the revenue and reinvesting that back into the community. You know what I want them to fix? <laughs> this might be very particular, but that one turn where you're coming from 285 going east from the west side and then you go right past that proposed CID area and then you turn on to 75 right by the weather channel that we've been talking about that one curve they've done a whole bunch of stuff I mean they've done little strips and they've done little but it's, it's just really tricky, right? And then if you look down on the ground, there are so many scrape marks from people who have not paid attention, <laughs> run into the wall, or put on brakes, or done something, because it's such a almost 90 degree turn. I wish they would fix that. Somehow ease it, somehow make it, I don't know how much more obvious you can make it, though. <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, the, the on and off ramps around the, the Cobb Cloverleaf for me have always been someplace i got to pay extra attention to. Yeah. Uh, especially getting off 285 onto 75 right there and heading north. It is dangerous. There, Be there's careful. There's a lot of, like, drivers who will just whip around in there. Yeah. It, it's nuts. Um, the older I get, the more conservative I think I'm getting with driving. And I think a lot of that has to do with you every time you're screaming at you. Defensive driving. Defensive driving. I don't, I don't want to die. That's Celine's <laughs> number one phrase when riding with me in the car. <laughs> so 
the Cumberland Improvement District, this, this is not new. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually been around since 1988, believe it or not. Um, but the, the, over the last few years, ever since the Braves and the Battery uh, and the, the redevelopment has happened there, that's when we've really started seeing the money flowing in and they've been able to reinvest this. I mean, back in the, the 80s and 90s, Cumberland Mall and that whole area was kind of destitute. You know, it was the, the mall where you would hear in the news when things uh, went bad and you just don't hear that anymore well, because actually, of the work. Well, actually, that happened, I want to say, in the 90s. Yeah, it was 90s. Yeah. Because that's when I was there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good measure of time, then. <laughs> I, I remember being at Cumberland Mall and then coming home and then hearing about Cumberland Mall in the news. Um, so it's definitely not the same place that it was back in the 90s and early 2000s. But since 88, the Cumberland CID has leveraged more than $160 million in collected into more than $2.5 billion worth of projects. This includes community planning, interstate access, local roads, streetscapes, beautification, bicycle, walking trails, commuter programs, and services. Uh, it's definitely made an impact. Huge. It had, uh, here, here's the impact. Um, we purchased a property in Smyrna uh, as an investment property in 2019. Yeah. And that property value has doubled yeah. in that time. Yeah. In, six, in, in five years, that property value has gone from 200,000 to over 400. Well, it's that area is also going to continue to grow because think about the CID, right? Mm-hmm. And then adding more of that and how many units did you say? Thousands or hundreds or I, I don't know. I mean, that's a ton of jobs that are coming. It's people a lot live of people. near their jobs because in Atlanta you cannot really drive too much or I'm sorry, hold on one second. Could you? (laughs) That's one thing about having kids. They have no awareness of their surroundings whatsoever. whatsoever. Anyways, with that, that whole development you were talking about, you know, that's going to be a lot of people who need to live around there because if you don't live maybe within 15 20 minutes of your area then you're gonna get hit in our traffic we don't have a major um transit system like boston does with the t we don't have new york's infrastructure with public transportation we're really car dependent here we really are um and with one of the things being so car dependent is creating access. And um, so one of the things that the CID did uh, took 12 years to complete, uh, but that was the Cumberland Boulevard Loop Road. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was the largest project in their history, totaling $300 million. The Loop Road connect, connects all four quadrants of the Cumberland Improvement District uh, without getting on 41, I-75, or 285. Uh, This includes the Kennedy Interchange, the Cumberland Boulevard, uh, Windy Ridge Parkway, and Mill Green Parkway. So all of that was created by the CID. Uh, It took 12 years to do with the intention of making it so people didn't have to get onto those major arteries uh, with more congestion in the traffic. You know, if you're on 285 going west, um, past this, if you go from across the Chattahoochee, coming from the east side to the west, you'll actually see some really great murals that's visible from the highway itself. And, um, you know, our son said, that's my favorite graffiti. And I was like, honey, that's not a graffiti. That's a mural. That's why it's so pretty. It says Cumberland. So we're talking about that area. Yeah. Um, so speaking of the Kennedy Interchange, this was um, one of the to, built to serve one of the largest job centers in the southeast. So in the 80s, commercial property owners were concerned about growing traffic congestion and access to the Cumberland area. Um, so the Kennedy Interchange was uh, completed. This was the one that was completed in 1996 uh, that gave access, well, 
it was one of the first projects initiated by the CID. It took 15 years to complete for $81 million. Uh, and this is where... This is the diamond interchange yeah. that you're talking about. Um, not the, the diamond diet. interchange. They're doing that on... They just did that on Windy Hill. This oh. was where the carpool lanes, you can get on and off of the carpool uh, at Acres Mill Road. Oh. Yeah. So it's it's that interchange. Uh, so the Kennedy Interchange, also known as Cumberland Boulevard Interchange. So Got where it. Cumberland Boulevard crosses 285. Um, the CID works a lot with traffic management, um, you know, planning how things are going to flow, creating access to everything within that area. Um, but it's not just about vehicle traffic. It's also about pedestrians. So uh, the when the Atlanta Braves announced their move to Cumberland in 13, that was a catalyst for the CID's most recent growth. Uh, today, nearly 30,000 residents call Cumberland home. This is a 27% increase over the past decade. Uh, not only has the number of residents surged, but the number of entertainment options also rose, uh, such as the Battery Atlanta, Coca-Cola Roxy, and Truist Park, just to name a few. Now, the draw of these entertainment options and access to jobs have showcased the need for vital, safe pedestrian uh, bridge, a, a bridge over 41. Uh, so the CID worked with the bat work to create a pedestrian bridge over uh that brought the battery atlanta and the city of smyrna to connect between uh cobb parkway so us 41 to the battery um they're doing several projects like that but also trails so smyrna and the cumberland area have some great trails that hopefully one day we'll compete with the Atlanta Beltline. Um, there are 38 miles of trails for residents and visitors to explore, and the Bob Callahan Trail is one of them. This is a trail that the CID worked with to uh, provide access to 840 acres of national parkland, um, with some trails connecting to the Silver Comet and eventually the Atlanta Beltline. So hopefully one day it'll all be connected. Mm -hmm. uh, That's actually maybe six miles, you said? Six, nine miles that they have to connect it? I don't know the distance that they have to it's go from Cumberland like to the Beltline, but they are working. Yeah. Um, again, providing access. This is, this is one of the, um, the core tenants of the Cumberland CID. Along with that, to use the trails, mm -hmm. they brought in a bike share. Oh, fun. Yeah. So over the past decade, bike share is becoming more and more popular. Um, yeah. And in 2015, the town center CID actually launched the first bike share program in Cobb County. Uh, after years of success in the town center community, Cumberland launched this in 2018. Um, and they have two stations. I so, have seen them out at Town Center. It's um, towards the back. I've seen it. Yep. Yeah. So since they launched this in 2018 uh, with two stations, it has evolved to eight stations and continues to be a popular popular community activity. You can go and just rent a bike and ride along some of the trails for an afternoon. Uh, a lot of them look like they've got baskets to them, so you can go shopping and hang out and just have a good day. Picking wild berries. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't be McCannless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I don't the think into the wild guy I that don't went, think anybody's going to be picking it got stuck in that Alaska wilderness right <laughs> don't, um, don't be him it, it, it's not just the Bob Callan Callan trail uh, there's the acres mill trail as well um, and as multifamily communities begin to develop along acres mill so did the need for pedestrian friendly paths mm. so in 2009 the CID uh, built, did the study and by 2013, they broke ground on the Acres Mill Trail. Uh, the Acres Mill Trail is 1.2 miles long, and it connects the Bob Callan Trail to the Cochrane Shoals unit of the Chattahoochee River National um, Recreational Area. So do you remember that one unit that we sold? Um, it was, oh gosh, 
downtown midtown area and it was right by the belt line yeah it was oh gosh what was oh it? i couldn't tell you the name of it to save my life but i remember that belt line was a really big draw factor and i could actually look out from that unit down to the people jogging and it looked so serene and so well manicured that i mean obviously there's some parts of the belt line that are rougher than others but it was really nice having that available to you every day just to come right outside your door and then hey get on the jogging path there exactly mm -hmm. so the the cumberland cid these are these are just a few of the projects um the windy hill corridor that diverging diamond interchange that is uh, Cumberland CID. Got it. So for access, they worked on the Acres Mill Ramp, the Kennedy Interchange. Um, they've done regional, local, and leadership studies and partnerships. Mm -hmm. uh, they've made s lots of improvements along the Cobb, uh, US 41 at Cobb Parkway. Uh, then for connectivity, they've done the Cobb Pedestrian Bridge, the Bob Callan Trail, Acres Mill Trail, the Cumberland Bike Share. Here's one that's really freaking cool right now what uh we are getting but uh, we have autonomous vehicle ride shares what in smyrna yeah in case you didn't know it's called the hopper wait 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 yep and it's part of the cumberland sweep project so we have uh the hopper is an autonomous shuttle it's a pilot program provided to the community by the cumberland cid and this is a, uh, it's part of a major mobility project called the Cumberland Sweep. This project is going to include a three plus mile path around the core of the Cumberland District with dedicated walking and biking lanes and an autonomous shuttle system with the goal of connecting people to jobs and Cumberland's major assets. Okay, are we talking about like a trolley kind of thing with a no driver that has an actual path? Or are we talking about... It's a vehicle. Oh my God! It, it I don't know how I feel about four that. Four wheels. It is autonomous. Uh, it looks like it seats eight, and then maybe a few can stand up. Uh, it is all electric, and uh, it looks like a tiny trolley with doors that open up on the side. Uh, I'm gonna have to try this out because we're gonna have to. right now my my initial reaction is scared. I've never been in an autonomous autonomous vehicle before in my life. So I think a lot of people are in that same basket there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't trust, you know, machines because really, I mean, my my remote control malfunctions, right? I mean, what if the thing that I'm in malfunctions? It right now <laughs> it is a relatively small um distance that it covers. But the the hopper uh goes from um it goes to the battery they okay. have a stop at the tke and papa john's building and then it goes across to the cobb county galleria center um and then there's multiple stops throughout the galleria so it it's mostly a shuttle around the galleria that goes over the highway okay um to the tke center and you can connect there i'm glad because if we're talking about actually crossing that intersection i don't think i'd risk it i mean this That's this is terrifying this is an image of it right here honey it looks like a, oh it, looked, it looks it like looks, a campus bus it kind of looks like um one of the shuttles on the plane train it does yeah the front of it it looks like a subway so the cumberland sweep is going to be this next major project and the Cumberland Sweep is designed to, um, this is going to be what, this is going to be how Cobb County competes with the Beltline. Um, it's a three-mile multimodal path. It's going to improve connectivity throughout the core of the CID with dedicated walking and cycling lanes. Uh, it's, I can only imagine the, the autonomous shuttle system is going to grow. Uh, by the way, the autonomous shuttle, the hopper, it's free through 2024 right now. Uh, we'll see what, what rates are like in 2025. Um, 
In addition, there's going to be another pedestrian bridge planned across Cobb Parkway, a high-volume six-lane state route corridor designed in partnership with the city of Smyrna, and this is to improve safety and walkability uh, to Smyrna and the Battery Atlanta. So we're seeing a lot of development happening in this Smyrna area. Uh, as far as the suburbs go, this is the most urbanized area of, of Cobb County uh, where you have access to these hot, you can have high rise condo living, uh, you can have an autonomous shuttle taking you to and from work potentially, and you can um, access through all of these great connected trail systems. So the whole idea with the CID right now is, is connecting Cumberland. A better, healthier commute. The sweep will create alternatives to the traditional car commute, connecting residents with businesses and the many amenities in Cumberland through walking and cycling trails and the autonomous shuttle system. Uh, we're also looking at increased connections. So the sweep will connect key battery destination or key destinations in the district. So it's going to connect the Battery Atlanta, Truist Park, Cumberland Mall, Cobb County Galleria Center, the Cobb Energy Performing Arts Center, the Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area, the Bob Callan Trail, the Acres Mill Trail, and the Cumberland Bike Share Program. So all of these uh, programs are really designed to create a well-rounded sense of living uh, and a sense of community. The Cumberland Sweeps development includes creating and improving areas of green space, increasing accessibility, and creating more community gathering spaces within Cumberland. This has the potential to be a huge gem of our Cobb County. All right. So that we wanted to cover a little bit about what's happening in Cobb County here. Um, in addition to this, well, there's always development happening, and we're, we're looking at a lot of prosperity, a lot of growth, um, and this isn't just the CID. Uh, the Cobb County Chamber of Commerce is heavily involved in attracting and bringing new businesses here to headquarter near the Battery. Uh, these are businesses like TKE, Comcast, choosing their headquarters here in Cobb, um, and this is kind of split. So about half of it is Atlanta and half of it is city of Smyrna, even though it's all falling within Cobb County. There is a little sliver of Atlanta that falls in Cobb County, and that's the section east of 41 near the Battery. So that whole Battery Atlanta section, the Truist Stadium, that is all... Um, that's all part of Atlanta. If you go across 41, you're in Smyrna. All right. So to wrap up today, we're going to talk a little bit about some real estate things that are happening in Atlanta, what we're seeing, and what is uh, what you can expect if you're in the market or looking for a house this fall. With the interest rates dropping over the last few weeks, we've seen uh, more uptick in the buyers that are out there. Uh, and engaged. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, we had a property that we listed in July, late July. That property in July sat on the market for about three weeks uh, before we got one interested buyer who submitted an offer because it had been sitting there. Their offer came in with less than desirable terms. Took the property off the market for a little bit. The sellers wanted to figure out what their exact plans were. We decided to relist that property, uh, and we relisted actually um, 11 days ago, uh, give or take, uh, at the time of this recording. Within 24 hours, we had two showings and one offer, and within uh, 36 hours, we had two showings and two offers. And both of those buyers uh, wanted to submit full price offers. One of them did. It was cash, quick close, and we closed on that property yesterday. That was why I went down to Kennesaw. This was a $500,000 home in Ackworth. Uh, the great thing about this property is it was unique. Uh, the uniqueness here was in uh, the storage of vehicles. So this house had a standard two-car garage, 
uh, drive-in straight from the, the cul-de-sac, but also it had a separate driveway that went down to the basement level. And there was another two-car garage, but it wasn't a standard two-car garage. It was a two-car bay that ran the entire width of the house. It was side entrance, so you could put another four to six cars in that basement. Uh, this, is a, this was a perfect case of a unique property for a specific buyer in great condition. So it went really fast. Uh, we priced it right where it needed to be. It was accurate. Uh, it wasn't overpriced. It wasn't underpriced. We were kind of spot on with where the analysis came by. And because of that, we were able to sell the property real quick. Um, but that's a, a major shift in what's happened over the last two months. Because when we listed this in July, it sat. It sat, it sat, it sat. We took it off the market, we bring it back, boom, 24 hours, and we've got two people interested in it at full price. Um, so it's getting better. We have buyers that are here in the market. A lot of them are kind of testing the waters and preparing for next spring, but others are ready to make that move. And with interest rates dropping over the last few weeks, they are starting to do so. They really are. Yeah. They're coming out. They're out of the I mean, they're not, they're not completely, but I mean, I'm seeing some movement. We're see, how, on, um, on Simply Listling, what are you seeing for listings? Are we getting more now than we usually do in the fall? Or is this something that it's not picking up yet? You know, there's an interesting trend that I've actually seen. And do you remember the Airbnb trend? Um, this was during the pandemic. A lot of people, you know, had cabin fever. <laughs> no, no pun intended, because we're in a cabin. Um, and they started thinking about Airbnb. And they started buying the low interest rate properties to rent out. And then it worked really well because... Remember, right after the pandemic, everyone wanted to travel. They were so tired of being in the house, and they wanted to go places, but they also didn't want to go in public places necessarily. So they would rent Airbnbs. They would, you know, do some a little bit more exclusive stuff, and I think that fueled it. Interestingly, right now. I have some former Airbnbs on the market, and I don't know if that's indicative of the economy or if they just got tired of it because it's been a few years, but if you look at, you know, Airbnb and their company as well, you know, they've had some fluctuations too, so I'm wondering if those properties... I'm going to start seeing more of them or not. Now, this is just purely speculation. And they're gorgeous properties as well. And it's it's a good mix of mountain homes, um, even suburban homes that I'm seeing that were fully furnished. And they're being sold fairly fully furnished as well right now. Well, and that's probably something that I haven't even brought up to you. But you know, just now thinking about it, I've actually, yeah, I've seen a few of them. Come to think of it. So with us being up in LJ, we're at our mountain, and there are three homes for sale up here we right were, now. Yeah, we were surprised when we came up. We are like, wow, there are a lot more for sale now. I mean, obviously, you have the one or two, you know, every now and then, but yeah. I mean, now, you technically couldn't Airbnb on our mountain, so that could, might be... It would just be hard. Yeah, but it might be not as prevalent. Yeah in other places i think they're more second homes our, yeah. mo our mountain is four miles of logging roads to get to and it's real easy for people to get lost it's also a uh, small gated community so it's not easy for airbnbs to find places up here we've actually let some of our agents stay at our place and i'd be on a phone call trying to to help them find it remotely because they just keep getting lost or they'll pass it yeah and so, um, a lot of second homes we're starting to see for sale, and that could be uh, that could be a sign of things to come. Well, you know, usually real estate is the first indicator. Yeah. Right. 
Well, Bloomberg has been reporting on several companies announcing layoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, we just got our first Fed rate cut um, last week. And it uh, didn't really change your mortgages when that cut happened uh, because most mortgage companies had already priced in a 50 basis point cut um, along with the 10 year treasury. So when that cut happened, it basically kept rates kind of flat and rates were already coming down into the fives. We're seeing it um, much more common to be in that low fives to five and a half uh, percent for your interest rate today. Um, but with these announcements of potential layoffs, mm -hmm. the question is, will the Fed hit a soft landing or will they miss it? Will this be a, a crash that hurts us? Or is this something that we're going to recover from pretty easily? Uh, the chat, and, and we're not going to know this for some time because a lot of the data that we need in order to tell us, it's a lagging indicator. So we're not going to have this data until three or four months from now um, to know if, if we have a crash or if we're going to be in a soft landing. All right. So... We've got some good news happening here. There's lots of development. The market is ticking up. Uh, we are seeing some more uh, vacation properties coming on the market in North Georgia. We're seeing some, uh, some second homes coming up for, for market. We're seeing unique homes selling faster, much more buyer activity happening. Um, you'll have to come and check us out uh, this upcoming weekend, um, Saturday, from one to three, I believe. Let me double check the calendar because uh, we have an open house. That's going to be Saturday, the 28th from one to three. We're going to have an open house at our listing at 2035 Kinridge Trail in Marietta. That's here in East Cobb. Uh, and we're going to be showing off the price reduction. So we got a, a fresh new price on that $525,000. Uh, this is a gorgeous uh, half acre almost property um, in the Piedmont Bend subdivision of Marietta. This is Sprayberry High School District. It is a four bedroom, two and a half bath. The owner has expanded the square footage from the original build by uh, expanding one of the bedrooms into uh, the walk-in attic space and then utilizing additional walk-in attic space on the other side of the house to create a fourth bedroom. Uh, the house is gorgeous. It's a no HOA community that does offer swim and tennis. Uh, and that property is um, all set for a new buyer to bring their golf cart and just enjoy everything that the community offers. Uh, so come and check us out this Saturday, September 28th from 1 to 3 p.m. Look forward to seeing you there. All right, uh, Celine, anything to bring up for what's upcoming on Georgia Living? What's upcoming? You mean events or real what? estate or? Anything that our listeners can expect from the show, anything that you want to say before we close out for today's episode? Mm, so every once in a while, we'll be doing this from the cabin. And naturally, we are real people <laughs> and with real families. So as if you actually are watching on YouTube, um, you'll see our German short hair pointer <laughs> peek up his head. Um, I'm pretty sure he stole a piece of toast while we were filming. Not only that, uh, you got up for a minute to help the kids. He laid down in your seat, and I'm pretty sure I heard him fart. I'm um, <laughs> going to see if the <laughs> mic caught that on the audio. There's our parrot laughing at us as Celine's laughing. Um, so we'll, we'll have to see how that goes. Could we're we're real people in Georgia, and yeah, this is life. Yeah, <laughs> that's my macaw. So everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Georgia Living. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Bye, y'all.